Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Jazakallah khair for joining us for another, another session of our Quranic reflections, mashallah. Uh, today, alhamdulillah, we're joined with Maulana Muhtasim and Maulana Ajman. Alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair for your company today. And inshallah, we will be exploring Juz 22 to 24. Uh, mashallah, there's some really, really interesting surahs in this uh, particular section, mashallah. I'm sure one that we are very, very familiar with. Um, throughout our lives, we're always told about one of these particular surahs, which I'm sure will be coming up in the analysis today. So inshallah, without further ado, I will start off with uh, Maulana Ajman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah. Uh, nice to be uh, here again. Um, I mean, yeah, um, the one of the verses that come, came to my mind straight away between, uh, and I thought just 22, 23, and 24 was from Surah Yasin, which is often read by, read by uh, most people in the But I think one of the reasons why, uh, you know, we are reminded to read the Surah a lot is, is probably because of this reason in this verse where Allah SWT says, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim, Al-Yawma Nakhtimu Ala Afwahihim Wa Tukallimuna Aydihim Wa Tashhadu Arujuluhum Bima Kanu Yaksibun So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Today, Al-Yawma Nakhtimu Ala Afwahihim Today we will put a seal upon their mouth. Wa Tukallimuna Aydihim The hands will talk to us. Wa Tashhadu Arujuluhum and the feet will give testimony uh, of what they earned, of what, what they did, uh, what they earned for the hereafter. I mean, we need, when, whenever I read this verse, the first thing that comes to my mind is the fact that on the day of judgment, I will have nothing to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will have no excuse. And even if I try and hide myself, uh, there's testimony, my hands and feet will give testimony to Allah. And that's what Allah says, he, he, won't, he will put a seal on our mouths that we can't even talk. It's really, really this verse is re referring to the mushrikeen, where um, the mushrikeen will deny the, uh, that they, uh, that, you know, all the crimes that they committed, they will deny it. <laughs> that's what most people do when they go to court, they deny it. But... Like in this day and age, uh, Allah SWT gave us worldly examples as well. We have fingerprints. Even if you try and deny that I wasn't there in the scene of the crime, but Allah SWT has done it such that our hands do give testimony. In what way? Our fingerprints. Our fingerprints were there. That, that is selfish. In, and I mean, this is in worldly context, obviously. Our hands gave testimony that we were there at the scene of the uh, crime. So similarly, on the Day of Judgment, um, how it's going to happen, we don't know, because it's far beyond our, um, our, our comprehension. But the hands will give testimony, um, and the feet will give testimony as well. Um, so we, wherever we, so the main lesson to take from this is that we are accountable for everything we do, everything we do, uh, every second of our life, we are accountable for it. The way we uh, bring up our children, uh, we are accountable for it. Are you are you fair to all your children and things like that? Although you know, when it comes to children and parenting there's a natural love that Allah places inside us for a particular child. That may be so, but as a parent, we need to remember that we need to be fair though. Just because we love a child, we can't favor that child more. Or even as a teacher, really, just because you uh, like one child, uh, be you can't favor that child over uh, other children. We need to be fair in everything. Um, and obviously, I, we, uh, we are accountable the way we spend our health. Um, Allah gave us good health. We are accountable for it. It's not free. Allah gave us our time. We are accountable for it. How did we spend that time? Um, Allah gave us wealth. We are accountable for it. Did we pay our zakah? Did we look after other people? So one of the main important things that comes to my mind straight away is accountability uh, from this verse. And um, I think this is one of the reasons why we're reminded to recite this verse a lot. So it reminds us of Day of Judgment. 
um, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question us. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. Such a wonderful reminder. Thank you so much. And in fact, it's really interesting you talk about accountability because sometimes it's like, um, you know, sometimes I have this thought when I look at my own hands, for example, the back of my own hands, and I think to myself, you know, I'm real and I'm in this world and that I know what will be coming after this world. Uh, subhanAllah. And it just really gives me that you know, a little bit of a shiver down my spine, just thinking like at the end of the day, we will be on school one day. The day of Qiyamah will come and that we will be took, put to judgment. Um, and subhanAllah, every time I look at my the back of my hand, especially on the after side, I just look at the back of my hand and I think, subhanAllah, it's real. It will happen. Uh, and it's important that, mashallah, that we are prepared for that. Alhamdulillah, uh, mashallah. And also another thing you mentioned that really hit home a little bit as well was about how, you know, our, our health has a right upon us and that we are accountable for how we judge our own health and our bodies. And I remember like, um, I think there's a hadith, isn't there, once where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu came across three people and one of them was fasting every day, thinking that he was doing this as a, as, as, as a dedication for his ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in fact, Allah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did say to him that, no, your body has a right over you. You can't just fast mm -hmm. every day and, uh, and, 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 you know, your body will, will answer that you didn't take care of it. And, uh, and subhanAllah, it just makes me feel of even the situation I had once in my life where I, I, I had an injury, I had a knee injury. And I was, I think this is near to Ramadan. And I was like, I can't go to Ramadan without doing sujood and without doing atayat on my knees. But it was, it was hindering my knee. And I was getting more and more pain in my knee. And then, you know, so I spoke to a friend of mine. And I was telling him how oh, I've got such pain in my knee, but I can't, I can't not do it. And he said, you know what? He goes, you know, you're right. Your body has a right over you. So even mm -hmm. though you may need to sit on a chair for a couple of months, inshallah, your knee will get better. But understand that within those couple of months, if you're pushing it and you damage your knee further, your knee will answer, will, will be a, will be a test, will testify, will testify for, uh, against you on the day of judgment. So actually, you didn't look after me. You didn't think, even though it was for something as, as, as great as Ibadah, that, that, you know, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, blesses so many other other aspects with, with, with rights also, mashallah. So, Imam Ajman, you want to come in? Um, yeah, I mean, on that point, um, you just reminded me, a lot of people, um, I mean, it's good to see the spirituality of Ramadan. A lot of people want to, uh, um, where they've got a medical condition that they should really be, uh, not fasting in this instant because Allah says wa in kuntum maridan awala safir um, if you are ill then don't fast so where the doctors have told us that we've got to take a particular medication some I mean I know some people are, will be like oh no um, it's Ramadan I've got to fast but where we're supposed to take that medication we have to that that is the right of the body over us like this body is an amana it's a it's a trust that Allah has given us we're not going to, this is not our eternal body. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, again, that's, uh, 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 when you mention about the body, I mean, there's one thing that came to my mind. Alhamdulillah, it's nice to see the good spirituality of Ramadan, but we've, we've got to remember about accountability. I mean, one other thing, sorry, just came to my mind as well about the Quran as well. And obviously, this is the month of Ramadan. Al Quran hujjatun laka aw alayka. Even the Quran will be on your side or against you. And this is one thing we need to remember. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this um, that the Quran will be for you or against you. So it's, 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 it's not going to be in between. So we gave the Quran its rights, um, then it will be on our side. We read it properly, we read it correctly, we practice upon everything we learned, then we'll be on our side. But if we're not really, um, if we're not really giving the Quran its due right, then it's going to be uh, against us. Oh, subhanAllah, such an important question. In fact, I, was, um, I had this discussion with someone recently as well, actually. You know, like um, the, the way the letters are pronounced, Forget Tajweed for a sec, yeah? Forget kill art, forget all, forget all the, the technical things. The basics of just learning how to pronounce the letters correctly, subhanAllah, is such an important, such an important aspect that, in fact, we all need to try our best to, to perfect, really, isn't it, inshallah? And uh, at the end of the day, if we're unable to pronounce our correct letters correctly, then subhanAllah, you know, we, like you said, it's something that the Quran may, may, may testify against us on. Um, like, you know, for example, there's some letters that sound similar, but they're different. Each letter has its own uh, characteristic, its own right. 
for example, if people are pronouncing tha and seen in the same way, then you know there's there's something that needs to be worked on there, inshallah. And inshallah, we make dua that Allah Taala helps us all uh, to continue continue to improve our recitation and uh, and give the the Quran its, its due right, inshallah. Jazakallah khairi ma majman. Do you have any other points before I pass it on, inshallah? <laughs> I mean, I mean, actually, um, one other thing, and we actually, um, even English teachers would know this as well. You, you teach this in school as well. When you, when you analyze, when you analyze um, um, some some of the play, one of the things that we're taught about is social responsibility as well, and this is really important in the, in the Quran actually. Um, as a whole community, we're responsible of taking each other. And this is why sadaqah is there, zakah is there. Uh, if we see homeless people, uh, at the end of the day, we we are, if, if that person is part of our community, we are responsible for that community. So there's a lot of community responsibilities, that uh, social responsibilities we need to resp remember as well. And I feel like social responsibilities are often overlooked. Oh, mashallah, such a, such a, again, another really important reminder, mashallah, and we make dua that we can help our communities as much as we can, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much for that, Imam Amalan Ajman. Amalan uh, Muhtasim, we're going to pass it to you, inshallah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Nahmadahu wa nasuli ala rasulihil kareem amma ba'ad. So carrying on with what Amalan Ajman sub said, um, talking about Surah Yaseen. So Surah Yaseen, subhanAllah, there's so many benefits mentioned in hadith and um, about Surah Yasin that it should be recited regularly, daily, and Subhanallah. When, as we're living as humans, obviously we have different needs. We have we have to go work work in the morning or whatever times, and we look towards other things, that um towards money and things like that. So that fulfills our needs and things like that. Whereas Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself says that you know if you read Surah Yasin, then I will fulfill all your needs. So these are even though we run towards the world so many with so many things um the, earning money wise and things like that whereas all that comes hand in hand with the commands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with all the adhkar and things and especially during ramadan if we can make it a habit try and make it a habit to recite surah yasin and carry on throughout the whole year as well inshallah um some of the benefits of reciting surah yasin is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfills that person's needs throughout the whole day so rather than trying to work harder just work smarter inshallah and read surah yasin inshallah and that will help us and it will it will help us and it'll grant us ease as well so even whilst working it'll grant us more ease than no more days inshallah definitely with that um, intention in mind and it's very famously said that almost everything has a heart and the heart of the quran is surah yasin so such a major surah of the quran and such emphasized surah in the quran also that in Hadith Prophet وسلم, says that if you recite Surah Yasin once, then it's, you get the same reward as reading the Quran 10 times. So this is the reward, fadlan, meaning extra from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously, reading the Quran 10 times is actually different. But subhanAllah, so much reward just by reciting this one surah and is very emphasized in Hadith as well. And continuing with what Mulan Ajman Sab said in Surah Yasin towards the end of it, ayah number 59. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that stand apart today, you criminals. So on that day, on the day of judgment, imagine when Allah when we're all standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is differentiating between and he's separating the believers and the non-believers, the people that used to do good and bad, the um sinners and the good doers. And imagine on that day, if we're from amongst them, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala separates us amongst the criminals, subhanAllah, what guilt we would have in front of us, with us. And it's just, it, this is an ayah that always sends shivers down my spine. And it's for us to realize that whatever, this world's temporary, and we need to try and make the most out of this, especially the days in Ramadan that we have left, and generally all days, that we need to have that time between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we can ask for forgiveness from our sins where we can ask forgiveness from the crimes and sins that we've done and gain that connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah jazakallah khair muhammad such a again such an important point and like you said we don't want to be listed or categorized among the criminals subhanallah has mentioned in that translation 
uh, in that in that particular ayah, subhanAllah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And like you said, alhamdulillah, such a beautiful tip, actually dedicating some time in the day, uh, mashallah, to just spend that time to connect with Allah. Mashallah, it's it's such a beautiful connection and such a, a special connection, mashallah, that it's really important that we continue to try to enhance it. And I'm sure if husband, you, you both would agree, but the more and more it's, it, we get, we feel a bit of more closeness, alhamdulillah, the more the more blessing and the more sort of happy we feel about ourselves with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. In fact, um, some good times, it, uh, there may be, so, in fact, are there any times that you guys have that you usually kind of dedicate to like, spending some time doing ibadah in particular just to make it just so like it's a bit of a, a tip for others really if there's any key times which are quite useful um i mean one of the best times i don't know if i've mentioned this in the pre one of the best times that i've found is to be after fajr there's definitely barakah in that time if it comes to memorization if i want to memorize a particular surah um it's after fajr <laughs> You know, before, during the night time, go over it. But after Fajr really consolidates it well, well enough. Um, so when it comes to ibadah as well, uh, recitation of Quran is after Fajr is the best time that I find. And uh, any any tips from yourself? So especially the time for the Hajj and things, and before Fajr, after Fajr as well, and really. Um, Obviously, if you're at masjid, it's different. But if, if you're at home or before going to the masjid at Tajud time, seclu secluding yourself in the room with the um, lights dimmed or switched off and just trying to um, connect yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time, just one to one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no distractions, trying to seclude yourself. And that really, really helps. Oh, mashallah, no, so true. And like we say, at that time of Tajud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest of skies, mashallah. So, what other, imagine. We always say the closest you can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in sujood. And now imagine being in sujood during tahajjud. I can't think of any other time that would be closer, mashallah. So jazakallah khair, alhamdulillah. That's really, really beautiful, mashallah. Uh, Mona Ajman, uh, I believe you have another um, section, inshallah, you wanted to look at. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, fr from Surah Zumar, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إن الله غفور رحيم is one of my favorite verses because it gives me hope. Um, you know, just before uh, we're talking about accountability, and we all know that no one does, uh, no one fulfills their. <laughs> we don't. We don't do things right as we should do we make we're full of uh, mistakes and even the prophet says Kullu bani adam that every child of adam is but the important bit is what he says afterwards uh, and the best of the ones who make mistake is the one who does tawbah the one who repents and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here oh my slave and if you really understand arabic uh, grammar here and Arabic um, uh, rhetoric here. The no, normal rhetoric Allah uses elsewhere in the Quran. The rhetoric Allah uses here. Allah says, Ya ibadi. And this creates a real closeness, just like Molna was mentioning about closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that creates a real closeness between the servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah, that, you know, when, when I read it, you, it's like you can feel the love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying with, Ya ibadi, alladheena asrafu ala anfusim. Those who have uh, transgressed against themselves. So obviously when we, when, we don't, uh, when we don't fulfill the rights of the things that we should, this transgression against ourselves. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And this is really important. In fact, um, it's haram for us to lose mercy in the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah created us uh, making sins. And some people, when they make sin, they become really, um, they, come, they can become really stressed out and anxious and things like that. Um, but it's, also, uh, it's always important to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, 
Inna Allah yaghfirul dhunuba jami'a. Allah forgives all sins. So no matter what mistakes we've made, Allah is telling us, no matter what mistake you've made, He forgives all sins. Even Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anh, he says, this is the verse that is the most hopeful for the sinners. And I mean, we're all sinners. <laughs> so this verse is, um, this verse is, it should be the one that is most hopeful for us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises to forgive us. We were talking about accountability just early on, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises to forgive us when we can't fulfill our accountability. We were mentioning, yes, sometimes a parent, they do favor one child more than the other. Yes, we've done, even if we've done such a mistake, it's not the end of the world. We seek forgiveness. Uh, if we have to, uh, from the, if we've done wrong to someone else, um, we seek forgiveness from that person as well. And we seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially, you know, when the middle 10 days were about forgiveness. And this is one of the important things to, about connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should really, one of the, we should make it a practice on our tongue. Uh, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilay. And this really, uh, I think, makes our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stronger. Um, and because it's constantly reminding us to be humble, to humble ourselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, as Mon mentioned about, uh, you know, just time before the Hajjud, this, I think this is one of the best times. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down to the first seven and says, who is there that wants to be forgiven? So Allah is asking us here. All we have to do is raise our hands and say, Allah, forgive us. And Allah will forgive us. All we have to do is ask. Uh, you know, in the hadith, it comes that a son of Adam can come with mountains and mountains of sins. But if he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, Allah will forgive him straight away. So this is the love and mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us. And especially in this month, this is the time we need to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the last few days that we have, um, really make that time, make the most of that time to connect with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's not waste our time in other, some, some people, we have work, yes, we'll try and limit work where you, where you can, but other things that are for entertainment purpose or the, things like that, we need to get rid of them, especially for the month of Ramadan and make that time for us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if you want to, uh, if you want, if, if you really love someone, and you miss them, for example. I mean, obviously, right now we don't write letters, but back in the days, they would write letters to each other. They would probably read a letter from uh, their loved one. So the Quran is the letter from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we make our time uh, and read the Quran. Uh, and it, even if that love is not there, it will eventually build. That love will build. But we need to make that effort. And, um, you know, uh, as Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as well, um, uh, the one who uh, repents from his sin it's like he had no sin in the first place so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this you know if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has informed us of this then we can't go around uh, you know another one that comes to mind there was a, woman, uh, a lady in Medina who committed zina and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed janazah uh, uh, for her and the Sahaba were shocked she, she committed such an act, such a grave act, but you prayed, you did her janazah. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, she did enough tawbah that this tawbah would be enough for all of Medina, all of the residents of Medina. SubhanAllah. So it goes to show, it's not about what wrong we've done. It's not about what wrong we've done, but it's about how much we're ready to repent, how much we are repenting to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That is the most important because this life is temporary. So, you know, while we still have time, while we still have the second, because we don't know we're going to be here tomorrow. So while we still have the second to really make Toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and I think the last point I wanted to make on this was that even Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to, he made, he did more istighfar than us and he had no sins. And one of the things that is said about that um, is that it brought, brought about barakah. So one, one other thing it does is it brought, brings about barakah in our health and wealth. 
uh, when we do loss of istighfar. Thank you so much for that, mashallah. Uh, I'm just thinking, what can I add to that? SubhanAllah, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for that. And again, it's so, it's so lovely to hear stories of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And there's so many of them as well. You mentioned the one about the, the lady in Medina. There's also the famous one of the man who killed 99 people. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him uh, simply because he was seeking forgiveness and he wanted to attain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And I think that sense of remorse is so important within a, within a Muslim. That even though, okay, we are, now we say insan derives from the word for mistake, doesn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. Insan, insan meaning people. And at the end of the day, it's, it's important that we, um, that we do, we, we all make mistakes, we all commit sins, but it's just important that we always remember to seek forgiveness, to feel that sense of remorse, to feel that sense of, you know, and, and, and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one we come to. And in fact, maybe one last thing, if, if I may add just another tip, Obviously, we are in these last 10 days of Ramadan, and obviously, the really important dua, a really special dua, mashallah, of Allahumma inna ka afu wa tuhibbu al afu afu anni. Mashallah, that's a, that's a, that's a dua and a dua that we're really encouraged to read as much as we can. Um, SubhanAllah, it's such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, dua, mashallah, meaning, Oh Allah, you are the forgiving and you love to forgive, so forgive me. SubhanAllah. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make um, the remembrance of Allah and, and the duas of forgiveness. Uh, moist upon our tongues, especially during uh, these last 10 days. Jazakallah khair, uh, Imam Ajma. Thank you very much for that. Um, do you have anything just lost, anything to add before I pass it on? No, no, I'm just going to say uh, Jazakallah for, um, for the dua as well. And it really summarizes everything uh, we've just mentioned that uh, where Allah says, Allahum, uh, the dua, where we've mentioned that Allah lo loves to forgive us, tuhibbul afwa. <laughs> So we, we're mentioning here, Allahumma inna ka'afun, you are the most forgiving, to hibbul affa, you love to forgive, fa'fu anna or fa'fu anni. Um, so um, it, it summarizes what we've just said, really, alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, uh, Mawlana Ajman. Um, inshallah, Mawlana Muhtasim, uh, you have a, another point, inshallah. So inshallah, so moving backwards, inshallah, so this is an ayah from Surah Ahzab, Ayah number 41, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajeem, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dhkurullaha dhikran kathira. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, O oh, you who believe, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in abundance. So subhanallah, in the Quran, if you see, there are no act, act, um, actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that do in abundance, that, you know, pray a lot of salah, give a lot of zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say, he just says, you know, establish salah and pay, pay zakat. But this is the action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that do it in abundance, not just a bit, keep it moist on your tongues. So subhanAllah, it's such a massive um, deed and it summarizes everything in Islam, to be honest, like in every action that we do, whether it's praying salah, giving zakat, um, our anything else that we're doing, doing hajj, doing umrah, if we don't have the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we don't keep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the forefront in our minds, then all of these things can be of waste. So it could be that someone is at work and even though physically they're at work, it seems like they're not doing um, many good deeds or whatever. But having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look constantly on their mind that, you know, I'm earning to earn, I'm working so that I can earn halal or to provide for my family, all these good things. So having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conscious in your mind and doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all that will become ibadah. And it could be that sometimes we're in salah and we're doing the actions, but, you know, our mind's elsewhere. We're remembering everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in salah. So even though it looks like it's such a good deed, without remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our actual salah, without staying focused in salah, the person that's working conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in a far better position than us. So it's in all actions of, in all acts of worship, it's all about keeping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the forefront and generally just trying to create time to do more zikr. So even whilst we're at work, whilst we're walking, it could be, I remember one of our teachers said that even if we wake up in the middle of the night, so sometimes it, it could be that we wake up at different times like it could be third time so even if you know sometimes we're a bit lazy we can't be bothered to get out of bed and actually so other than ramadan it could be them days as well that we can't be bothered to get out of bed but this is a time that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has woken you up has um taken your sleep so that you can call out to his name so even remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time even like we don't have to get up out and do wudu and things we could just make dua at that time as well remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's just a way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us as well inshallah
Mashallah, Jazakallah khair, Alhamdulillah, again, such a really, really important point and it really kind of, again, just focuses us on what's the most important thing, which is remembering Allah and, and developing that closeness with Allah, Mashallah, and uh, yeah, no, SubhanAllah, I think adhkar is so important. In fact, one thing I've worked on probably in the last year was probably doing like my tasbih after every salah, you know, and, and SubhanAllah, I, the more and more I do it, the more and more I feel like the dunya becomes less important to me in that moment in time. And SubhanAllah, I just think it's, it's such a it's such an important way and, and, and SubhanAllah, quite a, a manageable way in which to to attain that that, that sense of, of, of remembrance, mashallah. And I think another key point I think you mentioned was also halal wealth. And I think that's such an important thing, mashallah. Like you said, with this dunya and, and everything that's in it and the illusions that are within this, this dunya, within this world, where we want to attain more money and want to attain different things, we just have this desire to, to attain more money. And, and the problem is that sometimes we may be tempted by um, routes that may lead to haram uh, and acts that may lead to haram in order to attain that money. But I think it's so important to remember that actually at the end of the day, what is the most important thing? It's the pleasure of Allah and looking for ways in which we can attain an income, a sustainable income, but while at the same time yeah. not displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think, subhanAllah, that's such an important point. So inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. On that front, mashallah. So, jazakallah khair. Uh, did you have anything you want to add, uh, Mullah Mutasim, before we. No? Oh. No, inshallah. That's... Jazakallah khair. And uh, Mullah Ajmal, anything you want to touch upon? Uh, no, you know, when I was mentioning about Salah, and um, yeah, um, and re regarding the whole theme we were talking about, connect our connection to Allah SWT, build our connection to Allah SWT. When we're in Salah, as Mullah mentioned, if our mind's elsewhere, then we're not really getting any reward for it. So when we're in Qiyam, to remember that we're standing in front of Allah, when we're doing Ruku, to remember we're doing Ruku to Allah SWT, when we're in Sajda, we're doing, you know, I think it was Imam Ghazali, I may be wrong, but one, one famous imam uh, mentioned that it, when you're standing in front of Allah, imagine this, and this helps, it has helped me to gain more concentration in Salah. Think that the Jannah is in your right hand. Think that the hellfire is in your left hand. Think that the angel of death is behind you, ready to take your life, and that you are standing in front of Allah. Uh, so think that this is your last Salah. How would you pray your last Salah uh, on the earth and that really does it for people who struggle uh, that to get, have their focus in Salah that does really help to build your focus in Salah but as mentioned um, really can using this month to build our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, is one of the most important things Alhamdulillah such a beautiful mind and such a beautiful technique Alhamdulillah um, and alhamdulillah, I think we've, we've come to the end of our session today. Jazakallah khair. Well, I've learned so much, mashallah. And I think I've, I've taken away so much, mashallah, from both of your um, explanations today, alhamdulillah, and your reflections. And uh, mashallah, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa reward you both for, for your time, alhamdulillah. And jazakallah khair for everyone for taking the time to listen to today. And inshallah, we hope that you have benefited from the reflections and, and the discussions we've had today. Uh, inshallah, we make dua that in these last few days of Ramadan, we are able to take advantage of it as much as we can. And inshallah, develop that closeness and inshallah um, look to develop some habits that inshallah we can carry on outside of Ramadan and inshallah implement within our lives uh, uh, for the rest of our lives so jazakallah khair uh, please remember us and the Islamic Center in your du'as and inshallah we look forward to seeing you for our next session so, jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh